Hi everyone, today I'm going to tell you about roster versus vector graphics and what the best use cases are for each one. Um, I'm coming at this from the perspective of a wedding imitation designer, but this could be useful for any type of graphic design. So you might be familiar with working in Photoshop and also in Illustrator, and that is actually really helpful to this. So if you're working in Photoshop, Photoshop is a roster graphics program and Illustrator is a vector graphics program. So if you're familiar with those two, this might be helpful. Or after this video, you might be better at using both those programs when you understand the key difference. So a roster image is really what we think of when we think of photographs or images. So you can actually see this isn't an exact replication of it, but you can see the squares in the background of Photoshop. That kind of reminds you that it's a roster image because it's made up of pixels or dots and there's a certain amount in the width and there's a certain amount in the length of the file and that is a limited number. So each little piece that makes up this beautiful flower is one dot and that for that reason it's really good to use a roster image for things that have color variants. We usually use this for watercolor in stationary design. Um, photographs are also uh, roster images because you have one dot that makes up every little piece of that and it gives you um, a really easy way to go from color to color such as we see here in this watercolor. So if you zoom really really far in you'll start to see the dots or pixels themselves. You can see these little squares but from further away there's enough in here that you don't really see them. You only see them if you zoom up really close. So when I go into the image size, let's see. This image is 491 pixels by 1002 pixels. So that's the maximum size that we have here. And that's the maximum number of pixels that we can get from this image. So this image is 491 pixels by 1002 pixels. That's the maximum number of pixels that have been captured in this image and that's the maximum number of pixels we'll ever be able to have. So that's why when you're talking about cameras, the amount of pixels that you can get from the camera is going to help you because you can't go in and add more pixels. You have to work with what you've got. So this one is at 300 pixels per inch and it's 1.6 inches by 3.34 inches. 300 is usually considered a good resolution for printing a roster image. So anytime we print this at 1.6 inches by three inches or smaller, we're going to be okay. But if I were to increase this to um, three inches, for instance, we'd have to add more pixels to keep it at a resolution of 300. So in general, they would either make up pixels in Photoshop, make an approximation, but you'd be able to tell. So you wanna keep it at the size that it's been scanned in at, or if you're taking a photo, you wanna keep it at the size of the photo or smaller. So if you're scanning in something watercolor to print on a wedding imitation, for instance, if you want it to be printed at five by seven, you need to paint it at five by seven and then scan it at 300 pixels per inch. If your scanner only goes up to say 150 pixels per inch, then you're gonna to need to paint it about twice as big so that you can scale it down and still have that 300 pixels per inch resolution. So the good thing about a roster image is that you can get good color variants. It's great for photographs and watercolors, um, painting, anything with like a lot of colors working together. The bad thing is that you can't scale it up past the number of pixels per inch um, that you have available in the file. So on the other hand, you can work with a vector image. And so this is like working in Adobe Illustrator, usually is a vector program. And a vector is instead of created by like one dot in a grid, it's created by anchor points that are connected by mathematical equations. So let me show you, I have this circle. There are four vector points in the circle. You can see them at the top, bottom, and both sides. And then those are connected by a curve. So then no matter how large or small you make, this circle, those anchor points are staying in the same place in relation to each other and the mathematical equation used to get you from one to the other is going to stay the same. So the good thing about working with a vector image is that you can scale it up or shrink it down as much as you want without losing any of the quality of the shapes. However, if you use a roster image, when you shrink it down too small, it gets a little too crowded with pixels. And if you blow it up too big, it gets blocky and you can see that pixelated look that I'm sure you've seen before. 
So if you think about a font, it's a really good example of a vector image because you can scale a font up to any size that you want. And because the font is made up of what's called Bezier curves, which are the anchor points connected by curves, uh, it's always going to look the same and every point is still gonna exist in the same kind of mathematical relation to each other. So can you just vectorize anything? The most common way to vectorize things, at least in my world, is using the image trace in Illustrator. So that's going to take uh, something that is just a roster image and turn it into a vector image with anchor points. So you can see this actually did a pretty good job and it looks very, very similar. However, if I were to zoom in on the right one, which has been traced, you can see that what they've actually done is create individual shapes based on the different colors. So each tiny little color change has created a brand new shape. So I'm gonna zoom in a little further for you to see those. You can see all those tiny little shapes, which really gets rid of the softness of watercolor. And if you did this to an image, the faces would be all kind of distorted and that kind of thing because there's so much color variance and a vector image has to create a shape for each individual color so that it can be blown up. So yes, if you view this from far enough away, looks really, really similar. So if you were to blow something like this up on a billboard, for instance, it still would probably look okay from further away, um, but it's not going to give you that really soft watercolor look. You're going to be able to see that this is all different shapes and you can see these lines, these are all different anchor points. And honestly, something like this is gonna eventually crash your illustrator because it's so complex. So for this reason, I often say that we don't even need to vectorize watercolor. It's just important that you paint a watercolor or get an image if you purchase them that is at the size that you want it at at least 300 resolution or larger. So if it starts at 600, you can generally scale it down to 300 and be okay. Um, it's hard to scale it down like from 1000 to 100 or something. Uh, but generally you'll be okay if you're in that 300 to 600 range. If you are getting, um, if you're getting here and it's saying that it's like this says PPI 300, but it says it's 150, then you need to scale down the image a little bit so that you can print it at a smaller size and it has enough pixels to not look pixelated and create that full, really clear image that you want. So in general, I don't vectorize most of my graphics. I usually use them as PNGs with transparent backgrounds like this so I can move them around and place them where I want on the wedding imitation um, without actually having to vectorize it. And I don't worry about the quality of the print as long as I've gotten a high quality graphic that I've purchased or painted myself. In cases where the client then wants to print a 24 by 36 sign with the information on it, I just inform them that there's going to be a little bit of loss of that watercolor quality because otherwise I have to zoom in on that image so far that it's gonna look really, really pixelated. So then I do use the image trace feature to vectorize that artwork, blow it up. It still looks a little bit, you know, shapey instead of the soft and watercolory but when it's printed at that size, um, most people are gonna be looking at it from further away, and so it still gives you that nice, crisp image um, without looking super pixelated. So I hope this is helpful in determining roster versus vector graphics and what use cases you need them. Basically, if you need to scale something up really high or if you need to make a die out of it, for instance, for foil stamping or letterpress printing, then you're gonna to wanna to work with vectors. However, if you're going to print it just at the size that it's uh, that exists on the screen, then most of the time a roster image is gonna be uh, preferable if you're working with watercolor or photographs. And to keep it straight in Adobe, Photoshop is a roster image editing platform. So if you change colors, if you do an eraser or draw something, it's going to draw pixels or edit the pixels that exist. Whereas in Illustrator, it, you work with vectors. So if you change the colors of something, it's gonna change the color of the shape that it's in. Um, it's not, you're not able to do things like edit watercolors in Illustrator, but you can do those things in Photoshop because it's a roster editing program. So let me know what questions you have on roster versus vector, designing wedding invitations using Photoshop and Illustrator. I hope you'll check out some of our other videos on how to use Adobe platforms as well as invitation design while you're here. And if you are interested in becoming a stationary designer, I have a monthly membership just for invitation designers called Stationary School, and I'll link it in the description of this video.